All right, I'm gonna give you a review of the off-grid trailers. Expedition 2.0. I took it on a 2,000 mile trip, slept in it four nights, traveled from Florida all the way to Pennsylvania and came back through the Appalachian Mountains up steep grades, down steep grades, camped off uh, in off terrain, off camber situations. I want to tell you all about it. Really, what I should do is start by telling you how you can rent this trailer. Peter of Southern Wild Expeditions, you can find him on the app Outdoorsy, which is the, the platform that I use to rent this camper. You can check out his trailer on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm obviously up, uploading a video of my thoughts on it. I think it's awesome. Why not rent a trailer like this before you go out and purchase one or never purchase one? Just rent it when you need one from people like Peter. So check it out right here. You should be able to scan this QR code and go right to his platforms to check it out. Check out how well made this is. Nothing but steel and aluminum in this vehicle. No wood, no fiberglass, no foam board. Check out this approach angle. Axleless suspension underneath that steel fender flare. One of the things you immediately notice about this vehicle or this camper is how well made it is. Very sturdy, heavy duty hinges, solid all the way around, nothing but metal and steel as I already mentioned. Um, very good sturdy latches, make it airtight with weather tight seals. Everything is lockable with two different keys, one for the actual interior of the trailer and then one for all the storage areas. So check out the storage area that's back here. So this is all some of the gear that Peter leaves in the camper for you if you rent it from him. Uh, obviously, if you had one of these campers, you can set it up however you want to. I like what he's done here. Uh, there's a light in here so you can see what you're doing at night. Um, and you'll find that in all the storage areas. So very good space already, high up off the ground, easy to get to, uh, especially when you're towing the vehicle, things that you might need to get at quickly. Like for example, if you're off-road, I would put some re recovery gear back here if you need to access it at the rear of this trailer. And in addition to the recovery gear you keep in the vehicle, why not have some handy right here? That's what I would do if I was really going off road with it. So 11 gallon propane tank currently in the off position inside here. You have your on demand hot water heater and the furnace, the propane furnace. Also the switch for your water pump. And there's an internal light here too for this side. So this is a 230 shower enclosure that unzips and folds out. I'm not gonna do it for camera. If you wanna check out that, check out uh, one of the many videos that exist out there on the 230 shower enclosure. I think they're great. There are many of them out there now. This one's especially nice. It just folds out very simply and you stand in it and you can take your shower on this side of the vehicle with the hot water or with the water spigot that's on this side. One thing that I did find a little confusing uh, was the instructions that are here. Heater cabinet door must be fully open to operate the hot water system. The propane water heater requires combustion air and exhaust. So what I took that to mean, and when I looked at the videos, it looks like it, it's clear. If you're using a hot water heater, this door needs to be open. So um, it's an interesting way that this has been designed and that's required. Um, it does have vents in this door, but that's what that label says, and that's what I did when I used hot water. I made sure that this cabinet door was open while I used hot water. So that, that label is on the furnace and not on the hot water, but it's clearly about the hot water. So anyway, I just followed what it said. If you know whether or not that's necessary uh, from someone from off grid trailers, let us know. But that's what I did. I followed what was said just to be safe. I'm going to turn the water pump back off. We don't need any water right now. So this is the exhaust for the propane furnace, the heater. And this is the intake right down here for the propane 
furnace. Um, one of the things I thought about this, when I'm looking down the side of this vehicle, when I'm towing in my rear view mirror, one of the things I noticed was this sticks out further than anything else along the side of the trailer, this rubber hose. Now, obviously, uh, that could be routed. I didn't want it to get close to this because I was afraid of heat. Uh, but what I did do was whenever I was driving, I just kind of looped it like this to hold it. It's not going to do it now. It's less flexible. But I do think that that's something that could be addressed. I mean, maybe if you unscrewed this and rerouted it a little bit, or maybe even if there was a little hose clamp over here that would kind of hold it, keep it from being out so far. There's a potential that you would snag this on a branch or a rock or something else as you were traveling through, you know, an off-road situation. So that, that's one thing I noticed about it. Overall, love it. The propane heater was awesome. We camped in Pennsylvania for two nights and then in Virginia for one night in sub-freezing temperatures and we were toasty and warm inside the cabin of the camper. Before I move to the interior, I did want to point out the CVT uh, rooftop tent that was uh, on the vehicle when I rented it. I did not even need to use it. It was available and it's not something that Peter takes off. Um, so hypothetically, if you were to rent this uh, tent or this trailer, this camper, you would have enough for two people to sleep inside, really, if you had small people. I mean, two adults and a child could sleep in there if you wanted to be very snuggly. My wife and I were very comfortable in there on the nice foam mattress for a couple, for four nights. We slept on that thing for four nights, on the way there and on the way back as well. We did not even need to open this, so I didn't. So if you want to see what a CVT uh, rooftop tent look, looks like opened up and in use, plenty of videos that show that. This tent, this trailer comes with one. Personally, if I had this trailer, I would do one of two things. I would not get the tent at all, or I would get a clamshell. Much lower profile, uh, hard top, you could also use that a roof rack, but I would definitely make sure I got the roof rack on this. Um, what I would do is if I was camping with other people, I would plan on using the interior of this and I would bring my Oz tent for other people or their tent. We could strap it right to the roof of the trailer on the roof rack and we'd be good to go. Um, also, plenty of room for kayaks or bikes, etc., up on the roof rack if you didn't have this tent. So, anyway, if I bought this trailer, I would not get it with the rooftop tent, which is something additional. I would just get it with the roof rack that gives me the flexibility to, to take on the roof what I need to, depending on where I'm going, who I'm going with, and what we're going to be getting into wherever we go. I mean, I could take bikes, a stand up paddleboard, a canoe, kayaks, etc., or throw up other tent and shelter necessities if I had other people going with. Check out this storage area here. So this is the dual uh, deep cell batteries. There's also the 2000 watt inverter, which is plenty of power. I mean, you can run a lot of stuff off that. Other stuff that uh, Peter just leaves in here, uh, straps for the uh, swing around awning, uh, some stakes, manuals for all of the equipment, which was useful, uh, first aid kit, and also some leveling tools for the actual trailer when you get to your campsite. But a great storage area that if you had a camper like this, you, you could use for whatever you needed to have in here. But I think what Peter's done here is perfect for what most of the folks who would rent this trailer need to have. Okay, let's look inside this thing. So there's a little bump stop that holds it closed when you get to where you're going or holds it open. And you can see, get a little bit closer. It's a very nice, gotta be at least a four inch mattress. Super, super comfortable. You can actually arrange that to be, uh, you know, like a couch whenever you actually get to the place. If you don't need the, the, um, the camper to be set up as a bed all the time. We just left it as a bed. We put some sheets on it and we put uh, sleeping bags, pillows in there. We were extremely, extremely comfortable. Let me flip in there and turn on the light so you can see what's happening inside. So some of, some of the other gear that Peter provides, uh, he has this uh, storage box that has some cooking and food preparation utensils. That sack there has uh, the stakes or the poles that go with the awning. That is uh, a couch, a love seat for camping. It's brand new. I'll explain that later. There's a bucket that he uses under the sink to catch water that runs out so that you don't you know, have your entire camping area wet. I found that useful as well. Uh, let's get a little bit closer let you look inside. So inside the uh, actual cabin of the camper, you'll see there's three storage areas. That's what those three black doors are. They just uh, click and open 
and there's plenty of room for storage. We put some clothes in there. At night, uh, whenever I uh, took off my shoes, I would gently place them inside one of those storage containers so they'd be inside with me warm and dry. You see there's the input and the output for the heater. There's also the control, the thermostat for the heater. Over there are some controls for your electrics, two 110s, and some USBs as well as a, a gauge that shows the status of your electrics. That is the, the switch for the lights. You can make it dimmer or brighter as needed. On this side over here, we have one of the sunshades installed over the window or the privacy screens. Uh, this window doesn't have one. So if you're gonna sleep in here in a campground or you, know, you want some privacy or you want it to be completely dark, then you should uh, install the privacy shades. One thing I will tell you, and Peter mentioned this to me when I rented it from him, that voltage display is extremely bright at night so i took a little tiny piece of black electrical tape and i covered it up so it wouldn't be so bright at night when i was trying to sleep over there that's a remote to the fan which is in the ceiling of the trailer the roof of the trailer you press the remote open it up and uh, the fan will come on that's perfect for hot weather we found that uh if you crack these windows you raise them a little bit, turn on the fan, you've got a nice breeze going right through. But we did not need that on this trip because we were in very, very cold weather. But it would be wonderful in the summer. The only downside I see to that, again, like I was saying, the only downside I see to this fan situation is in Florida, it is often very, very hot and very, very rainy. I mean, you know, a huge thunderstorm will blow in and you're getting buckets of rain and at the same time, it's also still sweltering. It's even worse during the rainstorm. So if that happened at night and you wanted to have the breeze, I just feel like the way that that's set up, you would get some water or could get some water come in while the, the lid was open and the fan was blowing. So something to think about. Um, might not be as bad as I'm imagining. I did look and there, there is some uh, you know, some guard around the edge of the fan that should prevent water from rolling in. But if, you know, sideways rain is happening outside with heavy gusts of wind, you get some, I think you get some water inside with that fan. Something to think about. But with the windows cracked, uh, cools off when it rains, you'd have a breeze from the rain, from the storm, maybe that wouldn't be a factor. You just close it till the storm is over. But it's something to consider. Now, um, with the rooftop tent up there, it is blocking some of the water that would be flowing that way, but obviously not completely. Anyway, something to think about. Uh, I haven't done a test of this in a rain rainstorm, so it's possible that I'm completely wrong about it, but it's just my impression. I will tell you this, we had snow on the roof of the camper, and uh, on the second night of that situation, uh, the next morning when I woke up, there was a couple of drops of cold water just hit me in the head, and I was sleeping right underneath that fan. So, you know, as that snow was starting to melt and it was sitting there, that presented a potential water entry point. But um, it could have just been condensation from our breathing and the heater inside of the camper too. So I'm not certain. I'm, it's not a negative, just an observation. I am frankly thrilled with how well this camper setup works. I'm gonna take you to the other side and show you the last storage area or the last two storage areas and the refrigerator and the camp stove and sink combo. Something else I'm a big fan of is that roof rack right there, storage area. Perfect for firewood or maybe a couple of jerry cans of water or maybe even some jerry cans of extra fuel. You can strap it down right there and you would be good to go. So uh, also it'd be a great place to lay out a solar blanket whenever you're at camp uh, to just catch some rays. Even the, the angle of the, the back portion of that would be perfect. Anyway, so at one point I did get some firewood, put it up there, strapped it down with a ratchet strap and we were good to go. Uh, until we arrived at our campsite. Let me show you the fridge freezer combo. So again, the action of these doors is very nice. So you pull it out and if it's locked, it will not allow you to turn it at this point. But I have this unlocked already. You turn it and you open it. One thing that I think I would rig up somehow is a stop for this door. Something that would hold it open. Because right now, when you pull out the fridge, it's just a, it, it can just kind of cling back and forth. I'm not letting it go the whole way, but you can see down here on the edge of the door where it's made contact with the, the metal of the fridge slide a few times before. Um, I'm not sure if that happened in my care. I was very, very careful with this, but it's inevitable in the current situation. Maybe I, I'd put some rubber 
on the bottom of the door or something just to prevent that from being a problem. Anyway, not very, very nice fridge freezer combo that we used while we were camping. Uh, not familiar with this brand, but a very, very nice Truma. Um, I'm not, let's see if it tells us the actual size of it right here. Total storage volume, 69 liters, 45 here, 24 here. And, and it was plenty for us for four nights. I will tell you, we only really cooked twice using this, but we carried coffees and waters and Cokes and all kind of stuff in here. Had some ice cream and some ice in the freezer section. I have not turned it all off the entire time that I've been using the trailer. This vehicle, uh, this camper does get a trickle charge from the uh, seven pin cable that comes from the vehicle as you're driving. We were set up and stationary for two nights in Pennsylvania and I did connect it to shore power just because it was available, but I don't even think that was necessary. I think we would have been fine there for three or four nights based on the size of those batteries and very little electricity we were using. The fridge was inside shut. We were in cold weather. I don't think the refrigerator was having to struggle at all to keep our food cold, so I don't think it was a big deal. But shore power was available. I figured why not? Let's try it out, let's use it. Overall, very nice fridge freezer. Did the job for us and very easy to adjust and set. Truma, I'm not sure about that brand, but I like it. All right, let's check out the uh, sink and the burners, the two burner propane stove. So an interesting concept here. This is actually built into the door and it is a support for the sink burner combo. So inside here, there's a little rubber latch you have to release, kind of a bungee situation. And then you very carefully bring this down. I'm gonna pause this because there is a very loud truck nearby. Let's wait for it to go by. Okay, so that truck has gone a little bit farther down the road. So, as I was saying, down here, let's see if it's visible. Let me make this a little bit lower. So, as I was saying, down here, this is built in as part of the support to the sink and uh, burner setup. So, I've already released a little rubber grommet. Very carefully, you have to bring this out. Let me show you why it has to be very carefully. There's a little bit of resistance. I'm gonna bring this around. There you go. So that's the way it sets up. You see right there, the burner, two burner setup is here, right there. And then here is the sink, right there. Pretty cool. So the reason you have to be careful with it is because right here, let me put this back. Yeah, let me move around right here. The reason you have to be careful with it is because this is an option that Peter uh, told me he purchased. This is a little Bluetooth stereo, and you see it's on right now. See, there's a speaker there, and there's a speaker on the back side. He said it has decent sound, but frankly, it's just in a bad position based on the way this works. So this was already on. Let me turn it off right now. I must have brushed against the button as I was, um, you know, pulling it out, which I mean is very difficult not to. But again, let me show you how this thing folds back up. Let me open it back up so you can see the sink and the burner combo. So again, the two burners. And then over here is the sink. Maybe difficult to see in here, but I did want to point out this is the water fill um, receptacle. And this this trailer has a 31 or 32 gallon fresh water tank. So um, that's a lot of weight. If you do eight pounds a gallon, you're talking about 240 pounds and some change. So what they've done, which I think is ingenious, is that water tank is right at the very, very back of the vehicle. So it offsets the tongue weight of the trailer. You still have the weight in the trailer, but it's offsetting the tongue weight of the trailer and has to be improving the ride. That, is well, that was very well designed, I, I think. Just wanna share that. So, full size spare, very, very good uh, rotating foot with a wheel on it so you can, um, you can set your trailer up. I, I act like you can see that. 
there's the rotating uh, foot. You pull that out and rotate it down so that you can, you know, disconnect your trailer from your vehicle. Um, very, very sturdy vehicle. I love this system. I forget what the actual hitch system is called, uh, but it allows for full articulation up and down, which with a ball, there'd be no, no reason to even call this an off-road trailer. You just, you know, you're, you're lacking that ability, which is what this hitch will provide. I did have to get an extension for my seven pin plug because the trailer would not quite reach where mine is mounted up underneath the vehicle, but that is because of the way it was mounted by the previous owner, but it's no one's fault. Just how my setup was. So I did get that taken care of before I took off. The last thing I wanted to show you here on the front was the solar input and then the shore power, which is just a 110. So you can see right there. 110 volt plug and I used that when I was at the campground at uh, Seven Points Rays Lake in Pennsylvania. There's another look at that very very cool roof rack and I don't think I showed the steps which are built in. Not only are they steps but they add some stability to the storage box here but uh, very sturdy. I use those to get up there and, and to adjust. So the last thing I want to show you and I need to open it up anyway after having it closed up for a couple days is a 23-0 awning. It is the 270 awning and pretty easy to use, I think. You have to remember the order to do it in. So, we start off by grabbing these pieces and bringing them around. You grab the front. Bring it around. So, I set up the awning. I only put down two of the poles. There's another pole that goes here, which would get this to the right level. I'm not gonna get it out right now. If you wanna see a full video of the 230-270 awning, you can see those. I think it's awesome. I love how easy that is to set up and the stability of it, even without it being lashed down, which I did not do, it was great. It did sag a bit under snow, but I think that's to be expected. It started snowing while I was gone from the camper. Had I realized that was gonna happen, I think that I would have, I probably would have put it up. I think I would have just put the awning up so that the snow didn't get on. I don't think it hurt anything. I think the awning certainly able to handle it, but it was a chore to get all the snow out, out off of it in order to get the awning tight again. So, I don't know. I'm certain that people use these in the snow all the time. There's no problem. If you do, tell me, is there anything wrong with just leaving it out in the snow? Probably there's not. Anyway, overall, 
awesome, awesome awning. And it's great for your cooking area and, you know, prep area to be right underneath that. I, I pulled my front runner stainless steel table out, set it up right here under the awning, had everything I needed to prepare dinner. So, um, some summary of my thoughts on the Off-Grid Trailers Expedition 2.0 that I read in through Outdoorsy from Peter, Southern Wild Expeditions. Check him out. Um, I think the trailer is fantastic. It was beautiful to be able to get in there and be toasty and warm with a propane heater without having to set up a tent. I mean, on our last night, we stopped in Virginia after we drove for about six and a half hours and setup was as simple as leveling the trailer, which took me less than five minutes. I turned on the heater while I was doing that. By the time we got into the camper, it was warm and toasty. So um, that alone is awesome. I, I like the electric setup. I like the fridge, the sink and burners are very useful. I mean, some minor tweaks there. Um, nothing against the trailer it's just you know those kind of things are always going to be the case and i mentioned that in the video already um, i like that it has solar input for electric that's what i would be using in a lot of my camping where there's not shore power available that's not normally the way that i camp it carries 31 gallons gallons of fresh water which is fantastic that is heavy but the fact that it's uh, in the rear of the trailer um, offsetting the tongue weight that is ingenious and very well thought out i think that that's a fantastic way of doing that so thoughts i love the trailer would i buy one i'm definitely going to try out some more trailers i'm in the market at this point would i rent this one again absolutely i'm going to be a repeat customer and if you're interested in trying out an off-grid trailer uh, an off uh, you know one of these off-road trailers that you see somewhere go on the outdoorsy and you can search for your area or you can search for the area that you're going to go camping in to see if there's one nearby so in my case I picked this thing up nearby, then I took it to Pennsylvania and then drove it back. Possibly in the future, maybe there, there will be one in the vicinity of where I'm going to go camping and I can just pick it up there. That would have been a, a good idea, but I enjoyed working with Peter and this was a great, great opportunity for me. So check out his uh, social media, go on to Outdoorsy. If you want to try this camper trailer out, he is about an hour and a half north of Daytona Beach. He's in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. Um, there's many, many beautiful things you could see and go do and places you could camp in our area. Try this thing out. Take it through the Ocala National Forest to one of the springs and set up for a couple days. Definitely worth a try. And one more time, if you want to rent this trailer, you can find out more about it right there. Southern Wild Expeditions. Check them out. And again, you can find them on the Outdoorsy app. So download the app. You'll be one step closer to finding the camper that you want to take on your next camping trip. Check it out.